If Earth were a village of 100 people, if Earth was a village of 100 people, 82 people would be considered people of color. If Earth were a village of 100 people, 18 villagers would be considered white. In our society, people of color are considered the minority while white people are considered the majority. Since 18 out of 100 is obviously not a, my, a majority, why does this fictional social construct dictate who receives more resources? In the US, white neighborhoods typically receive more resources, educational, vocational, and community infrastructure. How can people of color consistently reach their full potential if not offered the same resources as majority white communities? I'm not asking the question in the interest of going to battle for the minority or to blame the majority. I ask this question to start a conversation about equity. We live in this village together and it is our responsibility to address this disparity of resources between people of color and white people. Hi, my name is Micaiah Barnes and I'm from <laughs> Evanston Township High School. For me, education is the first and biggest step towards racial equity. I'm a part of an organization called the Minority Student Achievement Network. The goal of MSAN is to eliminate racial differences uh, in opportunities and improve achievement for all students. Closing the opportunity gap isn't only the moral thing to do, but is vital to ensure the future of our democracy. MSAN's yearly student conferences bring students together from around the country to discuss race in their communities. Each school creates an action plan to close the opportunity gap in their school. Collaborating with schools around the country allowed me to bring back ideas and practices that were successful in other schools. As president of MSAN Evanston Branch, I brought innovative speakers such as Calvin Terrell, who spoke about student achievement and diversity awareness. I engaged students in conversations they wouldn't normally have about race and equity. I've also been able to work towards improving connections between students and teachers. It is important for students to feel like they're learning in a safe environment. We are always, we are always looking for ways to encourage constructive conversations about the opportunity gap. My fellow members and I have widened our reach by creating a social networking platform that enc encourages a better connection between students of color and counselors so that students are more co comfortable requesting honors and AP classes. We also work on strengthening student voice by allowing input, input from students on curriculum revision. We use young, lunch conversations with our peers to introduce the compass from Courageous Conversations, a book written by Glenn Singleton. By starting Courageous Conversations, we initiated awareness of opportunity gap at our school and in our community. Students and staff were educated in the right way to address race and discrimination. Months aware, many students and staff joined the movement to close the opportunity gap. My school has many resources and programs that we can use to address equity problems at Evanston Township, but we still have a ways to go. I'm proud to say that I was a part of the equity movement at my school and in my community. I would like to thank the Princeton Club of Chicago, the Princeton Prize and Race Relations Com Committee, the Princeton Class of 1966, and my fellow winners for creating such an amazing symposium so far. It has been a truly amazing experience.